July was about recharging the batteries. It was all about starting over, getting, getting everything done. You've spent 11 months really grinding. Take a month to recharge your batteries and get going again. That was before all of this transfer portal started, I don't know, two, three years ago. Now it's August. It's go time. Let's do this. You are locked on Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, I'm Stephen Willis. Big competition is going to be happening at multiple positions across the the team. It's going to be really interesting to see. And we're going to start out with Jackson Dart and Luke Altmaier competing for the quarterback job. It is going to be undoubtedly the story of fall camp and something that everybody is going to be paying attention to. Will Jackson Dart be able to engineer the comfort and the talent and all the expectations into his position? Or will Luke Altmaier be able to compete and hold off and maintain to where he can be the starting quarterback on the first snap against Troy. It's going to be really interesting, and I will say this. No matter who wins this job, Ole Miss is going to win. Ole Miss will be in the best position to win this job or win because of who wins this job than by if you picked somebody, if somebody was a Luke fan and was all in on Luke Altmaier and – We need him to win because he's my take, my pick. Everything like that, that's kind of poor for Ole Miss football. Whoever wins the quarterback job will make the football team even greater than it would have been. But I've said this over and over again. We have covered this competition as a real thing since January when others wouldn't even look at it like that. But we decided that Yes, Luke Altmaier is going to get a real chance to win this job. Luke Altmaier has the familiarity in the system to make this competition interesting. There's certain checks. There's certain things that he already knows. He's already a year deep. This is this was his second spring that he just went through. He's already gone through a fall. That is three periods of practice that he has gone through in this system. And I know other people are going to let you know, well, what about the fact that there's a new offensive coordinator? It's the same system. That's important to realize. Most of the time when you bring a new offensive coordinator in, the offense changes, the offense tweaks. But that's not really the case going on around Ole Miss football. When high turnover is going to happen, if that is almost part of the plan. You need to have fail safes in place to make sure that you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And what they have done is kind of ingenious in my opinion. You have an offense and a defense that was hand selected by the head coach. The head coach is going to run this offense and this defense. Instead of asking 45, 50 players to relearn something completely new. And he's asking offensive and defensive coordinators to learn to do what he wants to wants to be done. Jeff Levy was the offensive coordinator. I will argue that Charlie Weiss was always the second one, a de facto co-offensive coordinator, but in this situation he went to Central or South Florida to kind of learn how to be an outside offensive coordinator. And then when Jeff Levy left, Charlie Weiss was always the choice to come in. Just like they did at FAU. Kendall Browse was the original offensive coordinator. Charlie Weiss was the guy that came in and replaced that. The offense really did not change. Now these pass and run spreads might change a little bit, but a lot of that depends on what is being covered in the RPO game and who you have at running back. I expect this team, no matter who wins between Jackson Dart and Luke Altmaier, to be 65-plus percent run. Because you have Zach Evans. You have Ulysses Bentley IV. You have Quinshawn Judkins. You have an extremely experienced offensive line that returns four starters and adds Mason Brooks, an all-conference player, 
from this um, the Conference USA. You got Michael Trigg coming in as a weapon and tight end. You had one at a weapon in Kenny Oboa. This is a plus Kenny Oboa. Now there's some blocking stuff that he needs to do, but he's going to figure that out. Um, Michael Triggs probably 235, 240 right now. It, this will be the most talented tight end that Ole Miss has had in quite some time. Understand that. Now there's still going to be growing pains, of course. There's still going to be growing pains at the quarterback position, no matter who wins the job. You're looking at what Matt Corral was in 2019. Not 2021, when everybody's like, how do you replace Matt Corral? Well, the same way that we brought Matt Corral through. You got two young guys that are going to be competing for the job. Whoever loses this job is probably gone. So just understand that as well. But they're trying to win this job, and they're going to compete, and they're going to throw everything they have at winning this job. And they have a chance to be really, really good at it, honestly. They had a chance to be really good above and beyond at the quarterback position. This team has a chance to win 10 games. This team also has a chance to win five games. The quarterback position is going to determine kind of where that fits. If we find the right guy and everything clicks, and you've heard me say that a fast start is required. If a quarterback comes in and takes the quarterback job by the scruff of the neck, fast start, wins it, first snap against Troy ready to go, then other issues can be handled. But the number one issue on this team is going to be the quarterback position because it needs to be. Because football is such now that you don't win without high performances by the quarterback position. So that's the reason everybody is paying attention to this race. That's the reason it means so much to so many people. That's the reason this video is going to do extremely well because people care about the quarterback position at Ole Miss. Jackson Dart, you know, he's Mr. Swag, basically. Um, Luke Altmaier, old consistent. It's, it, it's almost a Brett Favre versus Drew Brees quarterback matchup going into the fall. But Jackson Dart, if he goes in and kind of takes things by the scruff of the neck and shows – a maturity within this offense because now let's just read real he's six months in at this point along with 15 practices he's kind of where you want him to be now it's time for him to take that next step and get ready because everybody expects him to lead this team moving forward he won't say it out loud but i'm i imagine lane kiffin expects it i imagine charlie weiss expects it Now, I'm not saying Luke Altmaier can't win the job, but the expectation going into fall camp is that Jackson Dart would take a step. Everybody thinks that. He's got all the talent in the world. Go back to the spring game and look at plays where things went well. Offensive line protected, all this, and realize the shortness of a period of time that he actually was in this offense. And look how good it looked. Look how smooth it looked. That's almost a drug for a coach when they see that, when they see it look easy. They're thinking, how can we replicate that? How can we we box that and, and give it out every play? That's what they want. And they see those plays on film, and they want to try to figure out how they can replicate them. But I say that to say this. Lane Kiffin put out his um, top three things he's looking for in a quarterback, and one of them was decision-making. And if you turn the ball over, that's what he means. If you turn the ball over, he will not play you, no matter how good you are, no matter how tall you are, no matter how many tools you have, you will not be the quarterback of the team if you turn the ball over recklessly and and consistently. Luke Altmaier doesn't turn the ball over. So we will see exactly what this looks like. I mean, this is the top, top um, storyline going into fall. Anyway, thanks for making the Lockdown Ole Miss podcast your first and listen every day. We are free and available to all platforms, including YouTube. Now, if we get to 2,000 subscribers before Troy, we're going to do a live stream pregame show on this channel, on this YouTube channel. 
So just do us a favor, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have, tell a friend. If you haven't, please do subscribe. And if we get to 2,000 before Troy, we will do that. We're also, on top of that, on our social platforms, going to do a 10-minute pregame show. So we're going to talk about stuff. We're going to keep it to 10 minutes or less. Respect your time. You can get caught up when everything's going on. Between the show and everything else, we're going to cover it from just about every angle. So it should be pretty cool. So give us a follow, um, a like, um, share videos on our social platform. If you do that, it will help us out greatly. Thank you very much. So let's hear about LinkedIn Talent Solutions right now. As you gear up for fall, you need to write people on your team to learn to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. So this is what you do. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. It's about 10% of the world's population, by the way. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so that your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions can make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So this is it. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week, Nearly 40 many million job seekers see, visit LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including iTunes. So don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes. Leave a five-star review. You can say whatever you want to say. Just leave a five-star review. That'll help others locate the podcast. And the YouTube and the iTunes algorithm and the Spotify algorithm, those reviews actually mean something. So if you leave a five-star review, people can find it more easily. And we do appreciate that. So thank you for that. Anyway, our second second position battle that we're looking at is probably it's honestly probably the most important on the team, but the quarterbacks are always going to get the ink. Understand that. But the linebackers are crucial. If Troy Brown and Kari Coleman comes in and does the things that they're expected to do, if Mo Crom does a fantastic job with them, if Chris Partridge figures out a way to utilize them, you have a chance for this linebacker group to be almost special. Because... On paper, you have a three-time all-conference MAC player from Central Michigan and Troy Brown, and you have a former um, Big 12 co-freshman of the year in Kari Coleman, and that was on the defensive line. And whenever I was at Ole Miss in 2005, we had a player that we recruited out of Miami. Um, I'm not going to say his name or anything, but he was a really good defensive lineman in high school. Really good. The problem is for him is how undersized he was to play SEC ball. So you could talk yourself out of what he was going to be able to do because of what he was going to be going against. You couldn't be 215 pounds playing defensive line and get 330-pound tackles. They, they'll eat you alive. They're agile enough to deal with your speed at this level. You can't, you can't speed rush and you can't, you, you can't bull rush. rush at this level. They're, the offensive linemen are too good. You need a combination. So, Kari Coleman played defensive line at TCU. Really good player. Like I said, Big 12 co-freshman of the year um, with actually Aishim Young, who's also on the team. So, they mo- they're going to move him back to linebacker. And we're going to see how he does. And how he does is going to honestly – foretell how good this defense does. He has the skill. He has the explosiveness. He has the quick twitch. I don't know how his hands are, but he is really good at what he does. And in this defense, linebackers are asked to do something a little bit differently. Nothing crazy, but 
it's like I've told you. This defense uses the offense's rules against them. So if the quarterback runs out to the right, the rules of football tells you that the field is cut in half. And they don't want you to throw back across the middle of the field if you're rolling to your right. So if a quarterback breaks the pocket, the first thing that one of these middle linebackers will do is rush the passer. They immediately break their zone and they go after to try to try to do that. You also you saw Chance Campbell and Mark Robinson both make hay um, rushing the quarterback from the linebacker position, and that is because they use the rules of football against the quarterback. Now, if you play a quarterback that's willing to break those rules, you might be in a little bit of trouble. But they're so ingrained; it's almost muscle memory at this point. They've heard it since they were seven years old, and now they're in college. So. It's pretty ingrained and pretty safe. So somebody that can get after the quarterback and very quick quick twitch like Kari Coleman is kind of important, kind of a good player, um, kind of a good philosophy. I, I see where their head's at. I understand why they want to try this. So we'll see how that goes. And you have Ashante Seastrunk. You've got Austin Keys and guys coming back. So that linebacker room is going to be extremely key um, for this defense because – by the end of the year, the defense was pretty good. The defense was always good all year long defending the pass. But early in the year, especially when Jake Springer was out, you could play murder ball a little bit against Ole Miss. They, Alabama gave it to Brian Robinson like 35 times. He ran for 170 yards and four touchdowns. And they just played murder ball. It's like we're going to gain four yards every time we hand it off. Stop us. Get out of that drop eight thing so we can kill you with Jamison Williams and attack you the way we want to do. Ole Miss wouldn't do it. And honestly, if they didn't play the go for it game so much and let that get out of control, it might have worked. If they just stuck with it and been patient, it might have worked, even though it was a 42 to 21 game. But that second quarter was a disaster for Ole Miss last year. And Alabama pretty consistently played murder ball. And like I said, by murder ball, I mean hand the ball off to Brian Robinson, let him gain four yards. And they were willing to do that all the way down the field and was able to contain penalties and do the things that, honestly, a top team in the country would do. Not many teams in the SEC this year can play murder ball. Kentucky can a little bit. That's on Ole Miss's schedule in the fifth game. So it's important by game five that this defense is where it needs to be. Like I said, I don't really worry about Troy Brown. I don't worry about Ashante Seastrunk. I want to know about Austin Keys, and I want to know about Card Cole. Those are the two big storylines going in from that position. Because the defensive backfield is good. The defensive line is solid as well. The questions on this defense will revolve around the linebacker room. If the linebacker room is good, the defense is going to be pretty good. And we haven't had a really consistently pretty good defense. Last year it was it was pretty good and then Jake Springer got hurt and it was kind of bad um, for a couple of stretch like the Alabama game, the um, Arkansas game because Arkansas also played a little bit of murder ball as well. Um, and then it, Jake Springer got back and it got better and better and better and better. So we'll see exactly what this looks like once these teams hit the field in the fall, but they have a chance to be pretty good. Um, we'll talk about the third position group that um, we're interested in, the position battles, you might say, right after this. But we're going right now we're going to hear from betonline.net. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs from your favorite sports and events at the – Number one online source for odds, lines, and gains. <laughs> Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information from live in game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. It's Bet Online. It's where the game starts. All right. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
Um, if you have, tell a friend. Also, um, hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video, which is actually quite frequently. And of course, upvote the video itself. It would be greatly appreciated. Um, and also, do not forget to subscribe to our social platforms like TikTok, Instagram, um, Facebook, Twitter, whole nine yards. Give it a subscribe. We talk about Ole Miss. We commentate. And we have perspectives from all over the place. Doesn't matter if you agree with me. I'm going to be opinion on what I want. But I want others that have opinions differently, different than mine. If you have that and everything, I mean, we can have a nice, lively discussion because I, I love to have these discussions. Anyway, the third position group that we are talking to, the first two, first one is the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, that's a duh, you know, doy. Uh, the second is the linebacker room. Really interesting about the linebacker room. The third one, believe it or not, in a big defense situation is our cornerback room. And maybe not necessarily for the reasons you think. Now, I expect DeAndre Prince and Miles Battle to kind of have those in lockdown as the season gets ready on top, you know, as we get ready to go. From what they do, they are perfect fits for this defense and what they do. Miles Battle had a heck of a pick against Baylor in the Sugar Bowl, but two really good cornerbacks. And you're like, well, Steve, why are you putting this one in your position battles? Well, Davidson Igbenosa is the reason I put it there. So it isn't really a competition to see if the room can be good. It is competition to see if this room can be elite because Davidson Igbenosa is a very, very elite defensive player. Um, he's the guy that was recruited by Chris Partridge. His connections up there was able to get him down. He was a participant or going to participate in the Army All-American Bowl. Got to the first practice, had a great practice, was the standout, picked off a pass. Everybody was talking about him, caught COVID. He was out, shut down for the rest of the um, thing, which he could have had, honestly, a big game and completely blew up in February. Of course, the rumor is um, Davison signed in the December window, but nobody talked about it. It didn't get released so he could have his moment at the All-American Bowl which I'm all for that. That's the, one of the reasons we don't even do news on this channel. We'll just tell you what's going on, but there's not a timely aspect to anything that we are doing. So I want to see if Davison pushes one of these DBs, either Deontay Prince or Miles Battle. Then also you have MJ, MJ Daniels and Markevious Brown, who are really good players. So that tells me the defensive back, the cornerbacks, are five deep. You have Davidson, who is versatile, who can play all over the field, and there's a chance for him to do just that. But you have other cornerbacks that can play as well. They can go three deep. They can put three corners on the field. Heck, they could put four corners on the field if they had to do it. And you have guys that are versatile enough that they could pull it off. This is kind of uncharted waters for Ole Miss football. It just is. It's not very often that you've had this level of depth. The talent infusion that we talk about all the time. Lane Kiffin's talent infusion that he did this year is the story that nobody is talking about that is absolutely the story of this team. Almost went to the Sugar Bowl last year. I think it was 17 blue chip players. And by blue chip players, I mean four or five star, star players out of high school. Right now, they're around 30, 31, 32, somewhere in there. And there's some big players, too. Like Zach Evans is on this list. There's five stars. There's co defensive player, freshman of the year, and Ashim Young and Kari Coleman. There's Jared Ivey, who went to Georgia Tech and was a four star player. Jared. J.J. Pegues was a four-star player. It's a really interesting big deal. And I talked about this on my morning walk this morning. If you haven't listened, subscribe to TikTok or Twitter. It's usually I usually put it on there, and I just kind of ramble what's on my mind in the morning walk. And today, I kind of talked about this 
every year transfer thing if and when it happens because you know people celebrate whenever there's not a vote but just like the expanded playoff whenever they railed against that one it obviously just delayed it so i honestly think that this transfer thing is going to go through and the reason i think that is because they want freedom of movement to be at its most effectiveness so they can stem the pay for play stuff they're going to try and stop people from unionizing. They're going to stop trying to make this um, professional sports. So the NCAA is allowing freedom of movement, or you know that they, that's what they want to get to. Well, my point is, when that happens, and if that happens, instead of high school recruiting becoming the being the primary way to build your roster, it becomes one of five. That lowers the um, market value of NIL. That that um, basically kills National Signing Day because nobody really cares if a player signs with the school if the next year can be recruited again, and the next year can be recruited again. It's just not going to matter. NIL is not going to be what it was as far as inducements to play because those players can leave in a year. So why would you induce them where you are, develop them, they go develop and benefit somebody else? It is the reason I told people to be patient about the NIL situation and don't put your finger on the scale. Nobody knew what the master plan was. You can see the master plan right now. And Ole Miss is uniquely positioned to take advantage of this. It lowers the amount of money that's required in NIL, which makes it to where we can play. We are already a transfer destination. We have a chance to go in a heck of a run. So do not fear change. I know everybody fears change. I get that. But do not fear change on this one because while it might look a little different and might be a little different, it's really no different than Ole Miss is running things right now. The other schools are going to have the problem. So that's just my two cents of what's going on. Anyway, get more on the SEC by making Locked On SEC your second listen every day. Host Chris Gordy and the local experts of Locked On, as me, take you across the SEC in 30 minutes. Make Locked On SEC your second listen. Locked On SEC. Hey, fall camp is here. This week, enjoy it. Football is happening all over the place. This is fantastic. Everybody needs to enjoy this because it doesn't happen very often. We waited for seven months of offseason to get to this point. And it's getting ready to start. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So get ready. I'm going to try and find unique ways to do it, um, to cover this all through fall camp, and to find things interesting for you. So let's make Ole Miss football fun again. And hope everybody has a good day. And I will see you tomorrow. Peace.